Hey fellow gardeners, we're going to be embarking on a very fun garden to table adventure. We're going to start with the culmination of many months of tender loving care as I harvest a whole bunch of vegetables and fruits, including Peachy who is ready and these tomatoes right here. Then we're going to transform this harvest into my favorite sandwich, which is kind of a mix between an appetizer and a lunch, the sourdough caprese sandwich and combine that with a peach white tea with herbs from the green stock and peaches from peachy. First things first, let's harvest some tomatoes. Uh, the first thing you're probably gonna notice is that my tomatoes are not red, <laughs> they're green. And the reason why I'm picking them green is because just recently we had a straight 24 hours of rain. Um, that was just yesterday. And I know from experience that if I don't pull them now, they will split. They will crack and split and that is going to hurt their shelf life. Um, it's going to cause them to rot. It's gonna attract bugs. It's gonna do all kinds of bad stuff. So unfortunately, I know this is gonna hurt the hearts of many out there. I do pick a lot of my tomatoes when they're green. This is one reason why you're probably not gonna see me ever do a video with these huge plants, these huge beautiful green tomato plants with these beautiful cascades of red tomatoes because I will not wait that long. I just, I know something will go wrong. In my garden here in Florida, there are about a million pests that want to eat your tomatoes. They want to bite into them. They want to peck at them. They want to destroy them. And then you have fungal issues that are going to destroy the tomatoes. And then you have this constant influx of rain that's going to cause splitting. It's just a mess. And I love tomatoes. I love the taste of a ripe tomato, but it's just not something that works really well down here. You will notice there's a couple little red ones you see there because I am letting some of them turn red just to see what happens to see if they'll make it to the full potential. A lot of these tomatoes I will eventually use to make sauce and salsas and things like that where you know, it's not like a fresh tomato where you really want that flavor. You want the flavor in the sauces and the, and the salsa as well, but if it ripens on the counter, you know, the taste and flavor between a vine ripe all the way on the plant to one on the counter isn't vastly different for things like cooking. So I do save a couple of them on the plant to eat fresh, but for the most part, I wait for them to turn from that dark green color all the way, they start getting to this light green to this white color, that is when I start to pull them off. And anytime there is a big rain, like what happened last night, I go out the next morning and I pull all those tomatoes. It'd probably be better if I pulled them before the rain came, but I almost never know when rain's coming here, our forecast is just not accurate. So I have to go out after it's rained in hopes that I catch them before they split. The quicker you can get them off the plant, the less likely they are to split. So you see a lot of green tomatoes coming off that entire bowl. Now those tomatoes are gonna take a long time to turn red. Those are by far the best tomatoes. <laughs> those little babies. Now that we're done with the tomatoes, we're doing my next favorite harvest of this week. Oh my gosh, the peach harvest. I, guys, I cannot even explain how excited I was to pick these peaches. You guys know, we have been working on, you know, how to trim peachy through the winter. You know, we fertilized her, we thinned her peaches. We have just been really paying attention to her this year because I knew I was going to get a good harvest and it was a great harvest. I was very happy with it. You're probably going to notice that Peachy does not produce huge, big Georgia-sized peaches. She is a small to medium-sized peach tree. As you can see, they're about the size of the palm of your hand. They're not super big peaches, but man, are they so good. <laughs> they are so good. Now, just like the tomatoes, I do have to pick her peaches when they're still a little bit hard. If I allow them to get soft on the tree, they get they attract the birds, the squirrels, and the um, bugs. And in this case, I had an issue with worms that I'm gonna tell you about in just a second. And the best way to get around that is to pick them before they are completely ripe. And the way that I do that is I let the first couple ripen to the point that they're soft. 
usually a bug will get at them at that point and that's how I know that they uh, the rest of the tree is probably ready for harvest is my first one or two peaches start to fall off from bug damage and then I go and I harvest the whole tree regardless of size regardless if they feel hard as long as they've gotten that peach color um, then I go ahead and just take them all off I do plan on um, doing a summer pruning of peachy here. I got that book, uh, what is it, a good, a, a little short fruit tree? <laughs> I'll put it down in the description below. It's a great book about keeping your fruit trees short. So I have maybe one or two that are like this one, which is that it, it got worms. So there's some sort of bug or worm that's burrowing into it. So this one actually got all over. We pulled two yesterday that had some bug damage. Um, I should have sprayed these with Spinocide or BT right after the fruit formed, but I forgot that that was something that I did last year, and so I didn't do it in time this year. So I did lose, it looks like about three. There's one right here that probably has some damage, but most of them look great. Uh, I'll count these up, weigh them, and I'll let you know how much they were. Now on to the rest of our harvest, we have to harvest some onions. This is uh, one. I waited for the stem to fall over before I picked it. Uh, I did my first harvest of my first watermelon. Unfortunately, it was not successful. I picked it too early. This is something that I do all the time. This is my main problem with watermelon. <laughs> so I'm going to wait longer. This one didn't end up working out. It still tasted pretty good. It was just very white on the inside. Then we have a bunch of cucumbers from my Boston Pickling Cucumber Vine. I've got four or five plants, and they've been giving me about three to five cucumbers every week. We have this um, butternut squash that needs to come off. And so I'm going to sit that in the uh, sun for a couple days, and then it's going to go in the pantry. And it will cure and stay there for several days. I haven't had the best luck with my corn this year. I did try two different new varieties, peaches and cream and sun glow. I believe this one right here is a peaches and cream. I normally grow silver queen and the ones that I started later that are further in the back there that actually are the healthier plants are the silver queen and I am definitely going back to those. This one doesn't look so bad. It looks pretty decent. The pollination was decent. The size is still somewhat smaller than what I'm used to. Um, the, the top of it didn't fill out as well as I'd hoped. This, this is a peaches and cream. I know some people have really great luck with it. That's why I was trying with, and it did okay, but um, I'm a fan of the Silver Queen, so I'm gonna go back to that. I have a couple other kind of smaller cobs that we're going to pick off as well. Uh, just didn't do great. The germination was a problem from the beginning. And then once they were germinated, the ones that did germinate, you know, then they were kind of spindly and then they put off their tassels too soon. Some of that was, you know, the excessive heat that we've had this spring. Uh, you know, some of it is, you know, probably a nutrition issue. I was not focused on my corn as much as I probably should have been. <laughs> There's a lot of garden, so some stuff just gets by me. So it is a, you know, it's decent. I'm happy with what I got. I still have more to come. I'm really hopeful that the Silver Queens that I, um, that I planted further along in the season, when they come in, that I'll have a better harvest of corn with those guys. But really nothing, nothing beats or tastes like homegrown corn. It is a little bit of a challenge down here, but worth it worth it guys if you want to give it a shot so then we have our cucumbers our corn and our peppers um, we're going to harvest some herbs now because we're going to make a really fun peach tea so i'm getting my pineapple sage uh, it gives off not the taste of pineapple but the smell of pineapple and then i'm also going to clip some mint this mint just lives in the bottom of my arrow garden. It's pretty much taken over the whole bottom and I do have to come out here and prune it. I have so much mint. It grows year round, you guys, all year round. Before we go inside and process all these vegetables and make our sandwich, we are going to plant some seeds. I needed to restart these. These are seeds of flowers. Some of them are native to Florida and some are not. They are swamp milkweed, butterfly milkweed, purple cone flower, and then I have uh, a butterfly pea and a red cone flower. I've been wanting to grow these for a long time for the pollinators. I did try them 
I tried to sew them in winter. Almost none of them came up. I think I ended up, I did a whole tray like this, like a 72 thing tray. And I have one, you know, butterfly milkweed from that. It's the only one that survived all of this. So I'm trying again. I'm hoping that, you know, winter, the temperature was too cold for them. Maybe, you know, they're Florida native. So maybe not all of them, but some of them are Florida native. So maybe they really like heat. So now I'm going to try them in the heat. I'm going to try to germinate them in the heat in the sun. Um, so what I'm doing is, is I'm using a bigger tray here and in the bottom of the tray I have put regular potting soil and in the top part of the cells I put my seed starting mix so that the seeds can start in that proper seed starting mix and then as the roots go down and get bigger you know they can continue to grow and get nutrients from the soil below. I do this sometimes when I'm having trouble with plants, um, specifically plants that maybe sprouted for me before but then you know, quickly declined in health, uh, you know, when they were younger. I feel like maybe that's a nutrition issue. I'm not 100% sure. So <laughs> I'm just trying a couple different things. This is what I do when I start having problems with a plant that I want to grow. I try different things until I've exhausted everything that I can think of. So I go in different seasons. I go in different plant mediums. I go in different sizes. Sometimes I direct seed. Sometimes I'll, you know, transplant. Um, I do all different kinds of things. I'll even do the, the, my usual last resort is the paper towel method, which is to take a paper towel that is wet and put the seeds in the wet paper towel, fold it to, on top of itself, and then put it inside a paper, or I'm sorry, a plastic bag. And I'll set that out in my patio. Um, that's usually my last resort because I usually struggle with getting those guys moved from the paper towel to a tray successfully, but it does help things germinate that won't germinate for me. So before we move to that step, I'm going to try this step first. I'm barely covering them because I know some of these like sun to germinate and or light to germinate and some of them don't. So I put some of them under the soil and some on top of the soil and then barely covered them. Got it super moist and I set them out in direct sun, <laughs> which I don't know, most vegetables don't like that. So I'm hoping that maybe the flowers will. So I have a little spot here in my pool. This is where most of my little baby seedlings live and I'm just gonna water the top. I already watered the soil, like I got it wet before I planted them. That's always the best thing to do, but then I'm gonna spritz the top just to make sure that the sun doesn't boil off that water. Now on to lunch, we are going to make the caprese salad sandwich. And I'm starting with a piece of my sourdough bread here. I made a loaf the other day. And so I just took a piece of that loaf. I'm making myself basically half a sandwich. And I'm going to toast that. You could do that in a toaster. I'm doing it in my little Bravo oven. And so while it toasts, I'm going to chop up um, my tomato here. This is one of the tomatoes that we harvested and we let ripen on the counter. Cap I remember the first time I had Caprese at like a restaurant. I absolutely adored it, adored it. And I never thought to turn it into a sandwich until I saw a recipe one day. And I thought, hmm, that could be an interesting sandwich. So um, I made it uh, actually for my friend Jacqueline over at the Wild Floridian. Um, I made that for her when we had lunch one day and uh, I absolutely loved it. I hope she enjoyed it too. <laughs> it's such a quick and easy but fresh yummy sandwich. Now, I'm using a jarred pesto. I have made my own pesto in the past. I have had terrible luck with basil this year. I'm trying again. Um, another viewer of the channel sent me some basil that she grows in her garden. So I'm going to try that one. Um, I believe that was Donna that sent that to me. And so for the sandwich, the rest of the sandwich here, we're going to put some balsamic glaze. And uh, that's it. That's the sandwich. Doesn't that look amazing? Oh my gosh, guys, you got to try it. It is so, so good. With our sandwich, we are going to be making some peach tea. So I did have a few more of the peaches that ended up with worm damage than I originally thought. I thought I only had three, but uh, after I picked the rest of the tree, which took a couple days, I found several more that had the bug damage. And so I'm taking my, what I call my wormy peaches. <laughs> I know, gross. But I'm taking the ones that had the worms in them and um, I'm using those for the tea. It's not that the, 
the peaches are bad to eat. They are good to eat. Obviously, you don't want to eat the side that has the worm damage or the bug damage. But um, I'm cutting that out. You can see here I'm kind of cutting out the parts that uh, have that damage. And I'm taking the parts that are still good and firm. And I'm using those to in my tea blend here. We ended up with about, I think, 60, 60 peaches that we harvested from Peachy, which I think is amazing. But um, my husband is what I call a peach monster. <laughs> he can eat 60 of them in the matter of a couple weeks. So uh, I think I might let Peachy get a little bit bigger, which I know is crazy because, uh, you know, she's a backyard peach tree, so you don't necessarily want her to always be super big. But I might let her get a little bit bigger so that I can increase the volume a little bit more. Um, I haven't decided that yet, so don't hold me on that. But uh, 60 peaches was great, and for most people, I'm sure 60 is way more than what most people eat in a year. But like I said, I live with the peach monster, and he adores peaches. <laughs> so after we've finished chopping up our peaches and you know getting I composted the ones that had the bug damage, um, now we're going to start making our tea with it. We're going to put the peaches in a pot, and then with the peaches, I'm also going to be putting that mint and the pineapple sage. I'm topping it with as much water as possible because I'm going to make this into like a concentrated tea. I'm going to let um, the peaches and the herbs boil here for, mm, it was probably like maybe five minutes. The goal here is to break down the peaches and break down the herbs so that that way they release into the water. I'm taking my potato masher here and I'm kind of crushing them a little bit as we enter the stage now where I'm going to actually add the tea. But I'm going to give them that crush now so that they, they have time to finish releasing all that good stuff. This is an organic white tea that I get that I actually really, really love. And it's a loose leaf tea. It's not in little packets. I take the pot off the stove and I let the water kind of come down from a boil to a simmer or to stop boiling so that that way I can add the tea because you don't want your tea put in when it's in boiling water. You kind of want it to be more of just hot water. I let it sit for about 10 minutes and then I put some uh, really good high quality honey into the bottom of the bowl and then a strainer on top and then I dumped all of the liquid and the herbs and the peaches into the strainer so that we can separate it. That's going to go into a half gallon mason jar. The honey hasn't dissolved completely here so I'm just mixing it a little bit to help it dissolve. And then we're going to pour the rest of that. It gets us about two thirds of the way there. And then I'm just going to add some water. You could add, I use tap water, but you could add distilled water or, you know, filtered water, whatever you have. I just top that off. And then I have this little handy dandy lid. I love it. I'll put both of these, the jar and the lid into the description, along with everything else that we had in the video today. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me in the garden and the kitchen. If you want to watch more of my videos between now and my next upload, I'll put them up now. Happy gardening, guys!